All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be talking about transforming charge conjugated spinners. So in the last video, we introduced the idea of charge conjugation. We talked about it in depth. I might have been a little bit confusing in there. Hopefully I wasn't too confusing. However, we talked about the necessity of these charge conjugated spinners. And what we're going to do today is we're going to transform these spinners and we're going to see why these things are invariant. And then we're going to take a little bit of a detour and talk about uh, some sort of what I think are beautiful analogies between what we're doing with these spinners and how we can sort of analog analogously compare them to transformations in space time. So with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to get this content early, uh, make sure to go onto my Patreon page where you can find early content and also where I will start to have uh, part start to be putting exclusive content on there as well. Let's get into the topic. So today we are talking about transforming charge conjugated spinners. So this is a topic that I don't think will take too long. My The past two videos were pushing 20 minutes. I don't think this is going to take that long because we really just want to do this one example. And we're going to show that in this example, uh, something quite interesting about the nature of charge conjugated spinners. And again, you could think of charge conjugation as really just use of the metric, the spinner metric, and really just conjugating the spinner, right? The spinners are complex in nature if you conjugate them, or there's this, there's such a thing as conjugating them because they are complex. Uh, they involve the number i, right? So we can, if you've taken complex analysis, or if, even if you've taken something like linear algebra, you can at least somewhat understand what conjugate, what, uh, a conjugate of a of a complex number is that's the whole point not the whole point but that's at the root of what it means to conjugate something anyways so we're going to start off here with let's remind ourselves superscript is a left chiral spinner subscript is a right chiral spinner okay um actually i think i have that backwards right so this so one of so one object is a right chiral spinner the other object is a left chiral spinner a conjugated left a conjugated right because we said that x l is going to be this guy and we said that the right conjugated is this guy this that means that left chiral spinner is going to be um, the left is going to be this guy and right chiral or conjugated spinner is going to be uh, this guy okay so that's just as a recap So we're taking, oh, actually, hold on. That. So we're taking this guy here, which is right here, and this guy here, which is right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to transform them. Transform, transformations again are boosts and rotations, which is, shows up right here, these two guys. All right. All right. So the transformation is going to apply to this guy, which is right here. Or not transformation, right? This is transpose. And then we transpose this guy right here. So the, the matrix nature of this guy comes from the Pauli matrices. So we have to, those are the things we're transposing. All right. And then uh, this guy stays the same. All right. Okay. So again, one of the, this is the conjugated guy. So these guys are conjugated. Okay. So now we have, okay. So to get from here to, let's see what the differences are. <laughs> okay. So, oh, the differences again are, 
transposing the conjugate. Well, transposing the conjugate is just going to get us back to our uh, regular ma poly matrices. That's just something you can check. That's a linear algebra thing you can check. It's not too terribly difficult. And so now we could say, okay, well, we have the minus sign here. If we, if we take out this minus sign, undistribute it, we get this. This is just the negative of this exponential. So if this is just the negative of this exponential, really what's going on here is that uh, delta distribution, right? So if B and C, right? So B and C here are the same, right? So that's just going to go to one because again, this, this is like a denominator thing, right? This divided by this guy, right? Because no, I wouldn't say divided by, but like, but this guy here is here. I'll write it out. right here, this is, it's a negative exponential, right? So this is something we've learned before in probably linear algebra or calculus. And we're multiplying it by this guy, which is gonna be going on the numerator, right? The only way these two guys are gonna be different is through our matrix is through our matrix elements right so if b and c are the same that's the same matrix element then we get a, we're going to get a 1 right? because these this is a unitary matrix times a unitary matrix the result is going to be a matrix that has ones or zeros in it that's where this guy comes into play so we have the delta. The delta is going to make b's turn into c's, right? So we get this. So this guy here is nothing's changed. Fabulous. So nothing's changed. That means that this guy is invariant under boosts and rotations. So we, so, so therefore, a term like this is invariant under Lorentz transformations. And we're, again, we're recalling all of this. This means, um, this is, again, this is something conjugated and something not conjugated. So something conjugated and something not conjugated is also invariant under transformations, right? I say also because this guy here is different than this guy, right? We said the conjugated guy which is right uh, right here, right? So right chiral. So it, oh, that actually is the same, right? So this guy and this guy, these two guys are the same thing. I misspoke. So this guy and this guy are the same thing. And however, a term like this it's not invariant under Lorentz transformations. You, and the way you can figure that out is just to do this again. Do this again, but for this guy. Uh, and by doing the same procedure. Right, so this guy, so what you need, this, this is why conjugated conjugation is so important, is because what you need is a charge conjugated spinner to make something that is invariant under boosts and rotations of the Lorentz algebra, or the, of Lorentz transformations. Again, transformations that retain the, uh, the Minkowski metric. Again, this is all sort of predicated on maintaining the invariance of the Minkowski metric. What we did from like two or three videos ago, maybe even four videos ago, is we said we're starting at the Minkowski metric. We want to find all of the matrices, all of the transformations that preserve that metric. And, we, and then we called those things Lorentz transformations. And then we found out that those Lorentz transformations have different types of representations. 
and one of those representations being uh, the set of Pauli matrices. And the set of Pauli matrices, again, when defined in a certain way, give us boosts and rotations for spinners. That was a lot. That was just a recap. Let's just go over a few more things really quick. This is, um, so again, this is why we have charge conjugated pit spinners to make a Lorentz invariant object. Recall that the definition of charge conjugation is this. So, and since this guy is inver is an invariant object, this is where things get a little bit interesting, right? Because since this guy here is an invariant object and this equals this, well then we could say that we have this guy here, the two C's match. So this this guy right here. So we're just looking at, if we're just looking at this guy right here, well that's this guy. And then this guy right here, well that's this guy. This looks very interesting. Why does this look interesting? Well, because we have our object, our mathematical spinner, which is right here, and another mathematical spinner, just transposed. Analogously for space-time, we have something that looks like this. Very, very interesting, right? So we have, again, they're not the same, but we can there's kind of an interesting uh, it's kind of an interesting analogy to make um, right because we have our metric we have our object we have our metric we have our object and then we have this guy here this just isn't a transpose right this x mu is just uh, the, the, this really is not it's not just a transpose it's just a space-time four vector. That's really the only difference. But the structure here is made so that or it's revealed to itself that there's a very beautiful analogy, a very beautiful mathematical analogy between uh, spinners and how they transform and space-time vectors and how they transform. So with all of that being said, we I've talked enough about charge conjugated spinners and spinners in general. We're going to get back to Lorentz transformations for, uh, for a little bit because we want to take a look at continuous transformations. So these, so not in matrices, but uh, operations that are that obey the same Lorentz algebra, but they're they're a different type of trend transformation. They're operators. They're differential operators, not matrices. And we're going to find out that the one type of differential operator that obeys the Lorentz transformation is a differential operator that uh, takes a very interesting form. Okay, We're going to take that and we're going to work with that for a video, maybe two videos, and, we're, and that's going to give a sort of bring us into the idea of what a Poincaré transformation is. So we're sort of elevating ourselves from uh, Lorentz transformations to understanding what a Poincaré transformation is. And then we're going to get into the interesting stuff, which is uh, Lagrangians and how from Lagrangians things like gluons and... Uh, isospin quarks and all those all that kind of stuff sort of emerges from the mathematics here and so with that being said if you like this kind of content make sure to hit that like and subscribe button you can get uh early videos on my patreon page and i will see you guys in the next one bye